The Black Company by Glenn Cook Plot Summary Chapter 1, Leggett The Black Company is in service as bodyguards for the Syndic, the ruler of the jewel city of Beryl. The band of sellswords is languishing in the humid city. It is yet another miserable summer, and they are displeased by their current employer and self-conscious of their reduced state compared to prior generations. The analyst and physician of the Black Company, Croker, is curing one of his company brothers, Curly, for poisoning and questions him about the places that he has been eating outside their barracks. Identifying the source, Croker reports his findings to the company's leader, the captain, who sends a sergeant named Mercy, the minor wizard Silent, and a dozen men with Croker to deal with them. Their target is the Mole Tavern, and they suspect the poisoners are the Blues, the faction which opposes the syndic. After they kill many of the perpetrators and their sympathizers in a bloodbath, Silent discovers that some of the more conservative members of the Blues are hiding in a cellar. They take them captive to turn them over to the syndic. On the avenue of the syndics, they see a visiting legate from across the Sea of Torments, accompanied by hardbitten veterans like themselves. The mysterious masked rider is on the back of a titanic black stallion. Later, a violent riot erupts in response to the arrest of the Blue Leaders. Several urban cohorts mutiny when they demand extra pay to deal with the mob and the syndic refuses. A company stronghold is attacked, and Mercy is fatally wounded, but the cohorts are ultimately repulsed. The next day several members of the company including Croker and three of the company's four wizards, Goblin, Silent, and Tom Tom, follow a rumor of a legendary creature called a Forvalaka escaping from Beryl's Necropolitan Hill. At the open tomb, they discover 54 ancient Forvalaka skeletons and several freshly killed soldiers, all drained of blood and missing their hearts and livers. This confirms the rumor about the Forvalaka, which frightens Tom Tom, whose former master Ngamo was badly mutilated by a young, unrelated Forvalaka decades prior. The riots finally quiet down, and thousands of corpses litter the streets. Tom Tom leads a black company delegation, which also includes the lieutenant, the band's second in command, Croker, and Silent. They are received by the masked legate aboard his colossal ship. The legate frightens even the wizard Tom Tom, and, disturbingly, speaks in entirely different voices. He makes them an offer of alternative employment, but this will require treachery on their part against the syndic. During a meeting of the company's senior members, they eventually decide to take the offer via their most honorable deception. That night, the Forvalaka attacks the syndic's residence, the paper tower, and slaughters almost everyone inside. The syndic actually survives, but it is implied that Match finishes him off. When the company goes after the Forvalaka, it kills many of them, including Tom Tom, much to the horror of Tom Tom's brother and fellow wizard One Eye. It escapes down the exterior of the tower. Leaving the city that night, they kill hundreds of the mutinous urban cohort's soldiers in their sleep. They head to a lighthouse on the Pillar of Anguish, where their transportation arrives in the form of the legate's gigantic ship. The legate takes the Black Company into the service of the Northern Empire and reveals that he has captured the Forvalaka and has plans for it. Croker realizes who the legate is, when the captain questions him, he reveals the legate is Soul Catcher, who was buried alive at least 300 years ago alongside nine other evil sorcerers called the Ten who were taken and their masters, the Dominator and his wife, the Lady. They ruled an ancient empire, called the Domination, before being sealed away. The company resigns themselves to their new service and One Eye is deeply troubled that the caged Forvalaka on the ship does not have any of the wounds they gave it. Chapter 2, Raven after crossing the Sea of Torments, they disembark at the city of Opal, where they stay for a few weeks. They meet with a strange man called Raven at the gardens to consider his enlistment. After a bizarre confrontation with the powerful Imperial Staff General Lord Jelena, the senior company members witness Raven swiftly murder a woman and two of her companions. They head out to deal with rebels who are causing trouble in the northern region of the Empire. The company enters the province of Forsberg while trying to link up with the Taken, called the Limper. The lieutenant sends Elmo, one of the senior sergeants, 
to make contact with their advanced scouts who are waiting outside a rebellious village. Elmo takes Croker, Silent, Raven and seven other men with him, and when they arrive at the village, they discover everyone is dying or dead, except for Darling and Flick, a deaf-mute little girl and her elderly grandfather, who are being tortured by the Limper's drunk soldiers. Saving the two victims and later recapturing the fortress at Deal earn the Limper's hatred. Later during the winter in the fortress at Deal, Raven goes on a weekly supply run, turnip patrol, to the nearby city of Orr with Candy, Dobelly, Jolly, and Flick. However when they are sold out by the stablekeeper Corny, the group is ambushed by about a dozen local thugs hired by the Limper's underlings Captain Lane and Colonel Zuad. Raven is severely wounded and Flick is killed. In retaliation, Elmo leaks the location of the Limper's men to the rebels, who capture them. But when it becomes a danger that the company's involvement might be discovered, Soulcatcher sends a fellow taken called Shapeshifter to help. They infiltrate the rebel bunker in Orr and spring a trap on the Limper when he arrives to rescue Zuad. Raven goes missing but reappears as the company moves out from Elm. Rejoining them, he takes the little girl Darling as his ward. Chapter 3, Raker Now garrisoned in the huge fortress of Maastricht in the salient, the Black Company has earned a reputation as the ladies' elite. During an ambush patrol the company obtains some of the rebel sorcerer Raker's hair. Using this one eye, Goblin and Silent come up with a plan to take him down with a bounty for his head, which Soulcatcher approves. Soulcatcher Goblin, One-Eye, Croker, Elmo, Raven, and two more soldiers named Otto and Hagop go to the City of Roses and set the trap. A stunning pile of treasure is planted on one of the frozen streets, protected by ward spells. The trap is powered by the sorcerer's own captured hair, and the loot can only be retrieved safely if someone deposits Raker's head nearby. The powerful limper arrives to claim the treasure for himself, and corners the helpless black company men in their apartment. But Soulcatcher intervenes, and reveals that the limper has been humiliated by Shapeshifter due to his unauthorized absence from Elm. The limper flees in terror that he will be disciplined by the lady, and they go back to maintaining their vigil over the treasure and trap in the street below. As planned, Raker discredits himself among his rebel peers trying to disarm the trap, and his followers lose faith. Finally, after Otto and Hagop are assaulted by Raker, Raven and Croker take the initiative. Raven uses supernatural tracking senses to track down Raker in the frigid city. Using Croker as bait, the pair kills him. With Elmo's help they pack up the treasure, which they split before they return to the rest of the company. Chapter 4, Whisper Despite their victory, the company is forced to leave the salient on account of the Limper's apparent blunders in the north. They head through the Forest of Cloud toward the City of Lords. During the retreat, they stumble upon and ambush a training camp of the rebel sorceress slash General Whisper. They discover her valuable papers, which the Lady and Soulcatcher later use to reveal that the Limper is a traitor. The Limper's true name was uncovered by Whisper, and she has used it to suborn him, the Imperial defeats in Forsberg and the Salient are his treachery. Croker and Raven receive some training in Lords, and the pair are sent to ambush both Whisper and the Limper in the forest. The risky operation is a success, and the Lady herself appears to take possession of the prisoners. The Limper is tortured gruesomely by the Lady, and is then carried off by a dragonfly demon. But Whisper suffers a much worse fate, she is transformed into the first of the Lady's new Taken. Croker, Raven, and Silent make their way out of the Forest of Cloud to find lords badly besieged. They cannot enter the city to rejoin their comrades. There is a hellish sorcery duel occurring at the walls, Soulcatcher and Nightcrawler are trading explosive blows with Harden, Whisper's ferocious cousin, and other members of the Circle of Eighteen. Chapter 5, Harden after the Taken lose lords, the company and a few thousand other Imperials retreat across the windy country to the Stair of Tyr. They fight against Harden's rebels almost every step of the way. At the Stair, they hold the enemy forces at bay for a time. In a carefully planned assassination, four of the Taken, Soulcatcher, Shapeshifter, Stormbringer, and the Hanged Man, take down Harden. 
But Croker witnesses an inexplicable and frightening incident during which Soulcatcher and Stormbringer allow the hanged man to die, despite Shapeshifter's obvious desire to save the man. Although Whisper and some of the old Taken are accumulating stunning victories against the rebel in the East, things are collapsing around the Black Company in the center of the Empire. They are forced to retreat yet again, this time toward the Tower at Charm, the Empire's headquarters. The Great Comet is in the sky, a possible harbinger of doom for the Lady and her followers. Chapter 6, Lady The Black Company captures two more rebel sorcerers for the Lady, young newlyweds, called Feather and Journey. On the return trip to deliver the new prisoners, Croker believes he is targeted by one of the Taken. Strange lime-colored thread threatens him. They hustle away and meet the Howler who flies them on a giant flying carpet to the tower. During the final preparations for Charm's defenses, Croker meets the Lady again. Soon, a massive accumulation of rebel armies attempts to crush their enemy in the days-long Battle of Charm. Shapeshifter is reportedly killed in very suspicious circumstances. Croker is attacked by the Forvalaka, last seen in Soulcatcher's possession, but is saved by the huge Taken known as Bone Nasher. Later that night, the Taken suffer even more fatalities. But it is infighting that does them in, not the enemy. Stormbringer mutinies, and she and Bone Nasher kill one another. On another night, Nightcrawler is killed by the rebels, but the Faceless Man and Moonbiter kill each other. The Lady sends for Croker personally, and reveals that the women among the Taken have been betraying her to support the Dominator, who is the true driving force behind the rebels. She subjects him to the eye, a dreadful experience, but gives him a beautiful bow with black arrows to use for a special purpose. He uses one of the arrows to chase away a mysterious attacker, a sheet of darkness which fits the description of Soulcatcher's namesake sorcery. On the final day of the battle, the rebel leadership claims to have found their long-awaited savior child, the reincarnation of the White Rose. The company wizards can see that it is a hoax, created to motivate the enemy rank and file. Feather and Journey, new taken alongside Whisper, emerge to stop the rebels' final push. War elephants burst forth from hidden compartments near the tower, and the rebel only defeats them after suffering terrible losses. Then, the Howler flies over the enemy formations, dropping bizarre orbs. As he returns, there is yet another betrayal among the taken. Soulcatcher somehow sabotages the Howler's flying carpet, and the diminutive wizard slams into the top of the tower at high speed. The Lady and Croker lead the battle to chase after Soulcatcher on the backs of sorcery-enhanced black stallions. After a long pursuit during which Croker doubts he is in full control of himself, he shoots Soulcatcher with his special arrows, and lops off his target's head. Soulcatcher's Morian opens for the first time, unexpectedly revealing the face of a gorgeous woman. The lady explains that Soulcatcher was her own sister. Where Croker once entertained fanciful romances about the lady, now he is thoroughly disgusted. He has no choice but to accompany her back on her badly damaged flying carpet. Returning to the tower, Croker sees windrows of dead men. Tens of thousands have been killed by the deadly magic in the Howler's orbs. Many dropped dead in formation. While most of the dead were rebels, a significant number were Imperials. He also briefly sees Darling among the basalt wasteland which surrounds the field of battle. Arriving at the tower, the Limper is revealed to have been re-educated by the Lady and newly loyal. The remaining rebel have been killed via ambushes and traps in the tower. Chapter 7, Rose Raven is believed to have died in the battle, but Croker and Silent surmise otherwise and eventually track him down. The two determine, as Raven had beforehand, that Darling is the true reincarnation of a historical hero called the White Rose due to strange events which surrounded the girl during the battle. Raven had deserted with Darling to protect her from the Lady. After Croker persuades the highly stressed Raven that they are not there to harm Darling, they give him horses, rations, and money, Raven's share of the treasure from the entrapment of Raker in Roses. Croker wisely recommends that Raven choose some other direction other than Opal and Beryl. In case Croker finds himself subjected to the Lady's Eye again, 
he interrupts Raven before their new destination is disclosed. After a tender farewell with Darling in finger speech, Croker and Silent ride back toward Charm and the Black Company, and Raven and Darling continue their trek into hiding.